Hello, and this is Serge David bringing you a soldier role type overview. Before I start this overview, I want to talk about the other role types for just a second to clarify the soldier's role within uh, the battlefield. It is what I would call the vanilla, the default. It comprises of most of your team, uh, the composition because of the way it works with all the other specialty role types and it's a bit hard to talk about just by itself because you got your scout role type which is small and fast and is good at recon and harassment you got your snipers which are long range fire support your heavy gunners which are great at collateral damage through non-direct fire such as splash damage um, your commander which is your map awareness and your defender which is lots of armor and lots of weapons as a corner cornerstone of a battle the soldier fits in this since it's more default such as this one you've got shotguns which is your close to semi close range your assault rifles which is your medium to close range uh, you don't have the long range, you don't have your splash, you don't have a commander module, you're a bit slower so you're not exactly a scout, you're just a frontline brawler. And Let's get on to parts. For the chassis, the biped or the digitred legs will be the best ones. They'll both be b small enough, uh, fast enough, and have enough weight to get exactly what you want. Uh, reverse joints are sort of acceptable, but they just don't have the health in the current in reincarnation of Mav that they just don't stand up to the punishment that you'll be taking because they're not as fast. So you need to cover them and play heals more often. Treads are a bit big and closer to the defender roll type but they can be used as a soldier build and wheels and hovers are more scoutish you could go with a scout soldier hybrid but I'd rather stick with the basics for quads and hex legs they're just a bit too slow for cockpits, I would steer clear of the light ones just because of health issues, unless you're using some of the higher uh, armored and durable ones. Um, generally, your bread and butter would be the mediums, as they are very easy to uh, cover up. And since you're going to be taking a lot of shots, you want to focus on protecting your cockpit and increasing your survivability while still having good movement. And for heavy is a bit large, it can fit in builds, but again that's a lot of area that you can get shot with. For armor, of course you want to get some armor on there. It's always great to have. Uh, on my current one I've got armor guarding my legs as it's one of my biggest weaknesses right here and it covers a bit of the spacer which covers the uh, my spine and I have my weapons covering my cockpit. Auxiliary parts, um, commander if you want to go with a hybrid build. Uh, turret and wall deploys are really handy as the turret you can go and add needed fire support without having to worry about it so you can place it on the top of a hill and the enemy either has to get out of range of it or shoot it down and in that time it will give you some breathing room to focus on aiming. The repair depot, I'd probably stick that with maybe like a heavy gunner or a defender instead as it's a bit too big and bulky for my tastes and when you're repairing in the battle you're gonna be in the middle of the fight you're not gonna have the time to go back and heal. And the wall, it's a great thing for just plopping up a shot when you see bullets coming in or right after you fire, plop up a wall and they can't fire back at you or they have to kill it and then you have 
at a free shot of them. Spacers are great for hiding your cockpit. Generators, whatever you want to use. So let's get into the real fun thing. Weapons. And the biggest thing of why it's so hard to write this and try to explain the soldier role type is that too many weapons synergize with the soldier. It's the soldier specializes in medium to, long, medium to close range, which is about 90% of all the weapons in the game. You've got, let's start with close range, you've got your flamethrowers, which are really good for blinding enemies, continuous damage. I generally don't put them on mine, but they do serve a purpose, as I prefer shotguns. They're great with their kickback, their burst of damage, they have a little bit l longer uh, range than flamethrowers, even though their effective effectiveness drops quite significantly. Uh, you've got uh, your melee weapons, which are just shotguns, more damage, closer range uh, effectiveness. You've got your medium range weapons such as assault rifles which are good continuous weapons and I use that as my auxiliaries for my cannons which are the pinnacle of soldier weaponry. The cannons are great. They have good damage, decent reload, and they are I guess you call the skill of a soldier build. You've got machine guns, which are continuous damage as well. Uh, don't have to aim, so when you shoot your cannons, you just switch over to the machine guns, let it fly while you wait for your cannons to go back on reload, and just have that little bit of harass continually working them down. I would probably stick away from rockets, just because of their slow travel time. And you have to aim it differently than all the other weapons you have because you have to aim it further forward up if they're at a uh, medium or so range and just going back and forth to those different kind of aiming can just mess with you when you want to more focus on maneuvering your MAV. For howitzers, if you're going with a hybrid build, but generally you'll stick that with heavy gunners. Same thing for snipers, if you're going with a hybrid build, but they're pretty much just cannons that are slower reload. And that's all the weapons that we currently have. When we get more ones, we'll be able to tell you more. Um, bombs and mines, uh, not really. Those are more defender kind of weapons, or just because it doesn't really contribute, and anything that you're shooting is going to probably move away and avoid that section, because those are more surprise weapons. And I'll go and take this one out into to battle for a little bit. And then I'll go and show you a cannon build. The soldier, since you're on the front line, you need to keep a very good awareness of your surroundings. Because it's all positioning. If they can get up on your side, they have a lot better chances of shooting you in weak spots. Where, if they're continually to the front of you, you don't have to worry about that as much. So it's just a big thing, that's why you need a lot of mobility, which is why I say treads and whatnot, they're a little bit too slow for what you want to do. You can see like that harass, shotguns. And I'm really bad at the, uh, sorry if I'm playing a little bit bad. I'm using the controller setup for movement, so I haven't done it in a while and I'm not very good at it anymore. And as you can see what I'm talking about is medium range. I just killed that guy. 
and when they get in close, I have the shotguns to help back up my fire. I think most soldiers should have a burst type weapon that, you know, punch you need, just like the shotguns on this build. It has a really good effect because they're seeing that big damage and then they get a little bit sprayed and if they try to avoid that you have more opportunity to keep moving and it's really great but what's really fun is when you get into a cannon battle because it really shows you the skill ceiling of this game because you're not just continually shooting someone you're positioning your mav you're juking them and that's one thing I should really talk about with the soldiers is if someone's shooting you if they can't hit you because they're aiming ahead of you and then you stop or suddenly start walking backwards they're gonna miss and that means that you can take a little bit more time to focus on aiming. And this AI is going to destroy that repair shed. So generally, if I'm in any kind of soldier battle, I will face my legs to the side. And of course, AI have auto-aim. Now I think about this, this was a horrible map to uh, show off on because of the long uh, distances between everyone. But unlike the other role types, there's not really much you can say about the soldier. It's all about really gameplay and you know just concentrating on what kind of weapons you want to use. Uh, I generally like to stick my weapon groups to a single or dual weapon group setup just so I don't have to worry about just don't have to worry about trying to throw as many shots down range as possible I can just concentrate on aiming use this use my all uh, secondary weapon cluster as just harass damage or just a little bit of extra like that I can just waste shots with that one while well, I'm just focusing the real impact with my main weapon group. And I'm going to do about one more one more battle and then I'll uh, end this. By the way, if you notice, I have I only have uh, the two weapon groups but I have it spread out over four different weapon groups. You want to always have a secondary camera if you're doing a setup like this. It really it really adds to it because if your gun cams go out you want to be able to aim reliably at uh, medium range and you just can't do that in third person So, as you can see, this weapon group, the camera's getting busted, but this one's perfectly fine. So that's just a little tip on setting up your hound. If you have at least two weapon groups of weapons, put them on, fill up all of them, and do it alternatively. Like if I had cannons, shotguns, shotguns, cannons, when I switch over, I'll won't have that second shot ready. I'll have to go over one more time and it really messes with your head unless you want to use both bumpers to go from one group one to two, the one to two instead of one, two, three, four and repeat which is me being lazy and 
just less things to concentrate on so I can focus on moving my hound around and aiming alright so this has been an attempt at a soldier role type overview I am going to be remaking these later with some fancy graphics and stuff uh, as the game progresses uh, please note that the role types are pretty meta dependent. If certain things change and maybe bipeds aren't useful for soldiers, then so be it. Anyway, see you on the battlefield, Mavericks.